The first open source application on today's list is something fairly simple. It goes by the name of Screen Time and you can download it from Evdroid like all the other apps in this list. And basically, as the name suggests, it just tells you the amount of screen time that you've had till you've turned on this application. It stays as a permanent notification in your status bar and you can quickly see it, click on it and see basically your phone usage data. Inside the application, you have a very basic option where you can just change the day change. So if you don't want the day to switch over at 12 and you want it to switch over at some other time during the day, you can do that. The application doesn't judge you about how much you're using your phone. It just gives you that information so you can do as you please. If you guys like simple and cool applications like the one that I just spoke about, be sure to like, subscribe and put on bell notifications for this channel because in today's video, I have a bunch of cool free and open source Android apps just like this for you guys. So without any further ado, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Alright guys, at number 2, we've got a pretty cool application called Barcode Scanner and this works on clothes as well as cosmetics and different food items. Basically, it lets you scan the barcode of any item that you have and then it will give you information about that. It gives you a lot more information if it's a normal product, you'll get more information. You can also view your history. You can also generate different kinds of barcodes if you want to from this application itself. Overall, it's a pretty cool application to find out the nutritional information of food items that you consume on the daily. Also, just to keep a track or maybe look something up online using your phone's camera. Definitely be sure to check it out. At number 3 guys, we've got a pretty cool Android application called Amarok and not only is the UI of this app really cool, it's just a really great application because you know, a lot of people ask me that some launches that we use don't have app locks or we cannot hide apps from it. So this is an open source application that lets you do just that. Now, this application does require Shizuku to work once in a while, but we'll go to that later. For now, once you open up the application, you just have this option where you can hide and unhide apps as well as files. Now to hide apps, you just select the applications that you want to hide and then we just select our hide apps. So over here, let's say if I want to hide uh, the ambient music mode application, I can just go and hit on hide and there you go. It's hidden from my app drawer now. I cannot find it even if I search for it, as you guys can see. To unhide it, I simply have to go back into the application, hit on unhide and now you will see that the application is back and now I can access it once again from here. It's super simple, uh, honestly a lifesaver if you want to hide files as well as applications, so be sure to check it out. With that said guys, at number 4 we've got Cache Cleaner and whether you call it Cache or Cache, the matter of the fact is that you know after Android 6 we didn't really get the function to delete Cache of files altogether or simultaneously. So what happened was every time we forget to you know delete all these uh, useless files basically and then after a point of time your storage gets full and you don't know what is eating away at your storage. So after you install this application just hit on clean cache of all apps or user applications. After you give the permissions you'll be able to see the cache data that you have and as you can see on Instagram I have over 8.2 gigabytes of useless data that I can totally remove. So you can select all the data that you want to remove and then just go ahead and hit on uh, the remove application and it does that one by one as you guys can see and voila I just freed up a lot of data more than 8 gigabytes. Also it's free, there are no ads, completely open source so yeah if you are struggling with less storage this is an application you should definitely have a look into. With that said guys at number 5 we've got a pretty cool application called Data Monitor. Not only has the application a very nice looking UI with which you can gauge intently as to how much data are you using. You can also set up your data intake as well as uh, you know how much data you have every day for a month if you have a limited data plan on your phone. As you can see, I can view my Wi-Fi data as well as my mobile data usage separately. You can also go to the app usage and see exactly which application have you spent the most amount of data on and also run diagnostics for your Wi-Fi to check the speed, etc. You can change the theme to follow the system theme, so I have dark mode, so that's what it's running on right now. 
And yeah, this is just a great way, as I said, to monitor your phone's data in case you have a limited data plan. And you can also set up widgets of this on your home screen if you want to quickly glance on it. Or you can set up a notification in the notification tray to quickly gauge while, you know, using your phone so you don't have to get into the application every day. Overall, a very cool Android app. Be sure to check it out. With that said, guys, at number six, we've got a cool Android application called Flash Dim. And the fact of the matter is, not a lot of Android phones have the ability to control the brightness or the dimness of your phone's flash. Of course, One UI on Samsung phones have this feature for a long time, but if you're a person who wants to get the most out of their flashlight that you have on your phone, this is gonna be a cool application. You can also navigate through the brightness of your flash level. So there are five levels, as you guys can see. You can go to settings and, you know, turn on the quick setting style as well, so you can have that as well. And of course, you also have these options like minimum, half and maximum to quickly turn on your flash to the desired level of brightness as soon as you want. I mean, if you have a flash on your Android phone and if you cannot control it, this becomes a no-brainer. Be sure to check it out. With that said, next up, we've got an application called Pi Launcher. And this has to be one of the weirdest and the most bizarre launchers that I have had the pleasure of trying. But overall, once you open this application up, you'll see nothing on your home screen. Click and hold on any empty space and you'll be greeted with a list of applications that you can navigate through in this pi like manner. Click on any one application and it will open that up, obviously, but tap on the screen once and you will find out the app draw. From here, you can select any application, click and hold on it, and you'll be able to add it into this list. To remove the app, you can quickly drag it to the cross section. To delete it, you drag it to the trash con icon over here. It is a cool application, but I don't see the meaning of it because there's no way for me to access the settings or basically do anything else. So it's a great way to navigate through applications if you want a clutter-free Android experience. But for somebody like me, as cool as this is, I wouldn't be using this as my primary Android launcher. So do with that information what you will. Last but not the least, we've got Shizuku. Guys. Shizuku is an application that is required actually by a lot of these uh, open source Android applications, especially if your phone does not have road access. It lets you uh, start the Shizuku client, which turns on a lot of features via USB wireless debugging. Now, the reason I'm telling you guys about this application, even though this doesn't do anything on its own, is because to use Amarok, as well as a couple of other apps that I had featured, like Ambient Music Mod, you will be requiring Shizuku, especially if your phone is not rooted. So it is a good habit to have this installed and know how to basically turn it on. Now, it's very easy to use this application above Android 11 because you can just use the wireless debugging feature. Now, on unrooted devices, you have to do this every time you turn on your Android device after it turns off. So that is a little bit of a hiccup. If you have apps that use Shizuku, they'll just stop working. So that is kind of a bummer. But other than that, no worries about anything else. This is a great app that you should have your phone if you're an Android fanatic and like, uh, you know, messing around with open source apps and apps that are traditionally not on the Play Store. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I genuinely hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. This is Anvab signing out. A lot of cool videos like this are in the pipeline and will be posted soon. You guys have a great day. Until then, I'll catch you guys next time. Stay safe and peace out. Bye-bye.